Today is Wednesday, June 11th, 2003. This is the beginning of an interview with Mr. Griffin Chalfant. Good. Uh, Mr. Chalfant is a, um, a veteran of the United States Air Force and uh, served uh, for a period of in excess of 20 years. And he saw service in, during World War II in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, France, and various other bases. Uh, the interview is being conducted at the Atlanta History Center uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Frederick Wallace. I am the interviewer. Mr. Charles Funk, this is your history. We would like for you to begin by taking us from the time of your enlistment into the service uh, and why you entered the service and take us from that point on through your various assignments to the date of your retirement from the service. Will you begin, please? All right, thank you. you know, I, I enlisted uh, in February of 1942, and uh, I, I wasn't drafted. That. that was one of the things that uh, uh, you talk about, are you drafted or you're not drafted? So I had to uh, do a lot of finagling. I took the, the draft board lady out to lunch. Anyway, we, I, I got myself in as uh, an uh, enlistee, went into Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis, and from there, uh, went to uh, Texas for, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember what the name of it was, but nevertheless, it was a place where yeah, some, some of the happenings were that it, it, uh, it snowed and the, and the dust blew at the same time. So it was a very unusual place. Uh, but uh, from there, uh, was sent to um, to Denver, Colorado, for for a gunnery for, for a gunnery maintenance uh, a school as an armor. That was uh, all the all the uh, the inventory of guns and bombs or what have you that uh, was available or that they were they were using. I was uh, taught to maintain and. Uh, break them down, build them, put them back together. And uh, after uh, a short time there, was shipped to an, an active uh, unit, which would be the 320th Bomb Group at uh, McDill Air Force Base in Florida. That was the first, uh, the first uh, assignment. And uh, it was just being organized and, and uh, it, the, uh, they were equipped with B-26 Marauder bombers. It, at that time, it was a short wing uh, a bomber, but the main thing about it, it was uh, it had lots of power in the engines. So uh, they uh, they were just organizing. They didn't have a complete complement of of uh, the right crews or what have you. So I said, well, I had I had a chance to pick up and get on a crew which was unlike uh, what, I, what I had taught to do, been taught to do. But uh, so I did, I thought, well, I had a, I had a nickel worth of uh, radio experience in the past, and I, uh, I got on as a radio operator. And so I was a little then, and so they, uh, the crew that I was assigned to, they thought, well, I'd be a good tail gunner. Not realizing what I was getting myself in for, I said, oh, sure, I'll do anything to be up there flying. And this went on from uh, McDill. We went to Lackman and staged. Uh, there was episodes that happened then, then at Lackland, uh, the expression of one a day in Tampa Bay, and that was the B-26 was having trouble. And we, since we found out in years, years after that that the, there was a filter on the carburetor that, was, that choked up the carburetor and caused the engine to stop, and so no more than they got off while they, they went into the Tampa Bay. So we lost a lot of aircraft uh, then, but nevertheless, it, uh, I, we kept on flying. From, uh, from Lackland, or from the Florida area, we uh, started toward, uh, we went to uh, Indiana, uh, for getting everything together, you're picking up new aircraft to, um, and and also 
armor, uh, let's see, uh, bulletproof uh, tanks, uh, fuel tanks, and then we, we got more oh, more training. I did have more training in in uh, in radio, and uh, I got to where I was pretty fair with uh, with receiving and sending uh, the Morse code and and what have you. But uh, we were there for a little while. Uh, we're, we're, we were entertained by some pretty good uh, talent. I think Glenn Miller came by there, and, and they were they were making the rounds of all, all those all the places, and uh, we enjoyed that. Um, were you assigned to a specific aircraft at the yes, time? I mean, it was still a B twenty six. Still a B twenty six. And was the crew the same? Uh, the crew makeup wasn't yet, but close to it. And when we uh, left there. Uh, we were assigned to aircraft, and that was at Morrison Field in Florida. At uh, outs Morrison was outside of uh, say, oh, uh, Daytona. No, 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 Daytona is Florida. No, it was on down further than that, but uh, about halfway down in Florida, and that's when we start picking up, picking up. Uh, uh, more aircraft, and, and uh, we dropped one of the, we, we swapped tanks, picked up a lightweight tank, because we had, we were, we were, Please we, were stu we were studying. When you say tanks, what do you mean? Uh, gas tanks. Okay. They, they would carry them in the bomb bay. And so uh, we were, we were briefing on going the northern route to get to uh, North Africa. Uh, that would be up through uh, the fjords and around the Greenland and Iceland and that way and into England and on down. But uh, by the time we got through all our extracurricular activities, why, uh, meaning uh, there was more, uh, we got more involved in actually uh, the happenings of the aircraft. And so we, we went the southern route. So we went down through Barinkin, that's at uh, Puerto Rico. That's when we were made up as a crew, uh, just before we left there. And uh, went to Brinken. We stayed over overnight there. And then to Georgetown, that's British, uh, British Guiana. And over to the corner, uh, across the equator. We actually crossed it twice uh, to um, Berlin and uh, Brazil and uh, gassed up and went to the Ascension Island and that that you you got to you got to hit that baby on the head otherwise you're out in mid nowhere and uh, I flew into Ascension Island uh, it had uh, it's all it's volcanic it's all volcanic and uh, and had a runway that reminds you of. Uh, uh, roller coaster. It, it was pretty. It was a, quite a thrill to take off and land on the thing. But nevertheless, I, I did get a chance to. We were there a couple of days and kind of roam around and, and hike over the uh, the uh, volcanic ash. It was all, all over the place. From there, we went to Accra. That's in. That's on the Go, the Gold Coast. It's on the insert of Africa. And that was uh, a place that we found that they had ant hills about ant hills about uh, at least three to four foot high, and they uh, they, they assigned guards to the planes, and uh, the guards they, they said, well, you don't leave anything there. They were I mean, unusual looking bunch, and they they said they, they don't ask questions; they just start cutting. They have big. Uh, Bennett's, not Bennett's, but uh, oh yeah, or the, the machetes, big knives, machetes. Thank you. Uh, they had uh, so they had, you could hear them coming. They they they, they didn't they didn't have shoes. It was just sort of a shh, shh, shh sound, and and this off in the distance it was it was eerie. But nevertheless, we never we never went back to the aircraft. That was that was beyond beyond belief. What was your destination? Huh? That was what was all. No, I said, what was your the destination? The destination was Oran, North Africa. And we, we, from there, we went to uh, 
uh, Robertsville at, uh, that's where the, right now, that's where, that's one of the, the uh, emergency stations are for the, uh, oh, well, it, What country is that located? Yeah, well, uh, Robertsville is, that's where I'm trying, oh, Liberty. There's Liberty, oh, no. Well, not Liberty, but uh, they have a flag. Liberia. Huh? Liberia. Liberia, thank you. Liberia. In fact, we got stuck there for four days. Uh, we got to the place where our Bombay doors went closed, and so we all sat down and, and we took crocus cloth and, and <laughs> worked on a, a per certain piece of item of the, of the actuating cylinder that would make the doors close when they're supposed to. But anyway, we had a good time. And we, we took a uh, I took a canoe trip or a, a, a trip down the, down the river and I got to a place where the, one of the natives wanted to sell me their, sell me a baby for, I forget, a, a small amount, but man, this was getting weird. We were looking for monkeys up in the, the, down in the area, but nevertheless from there we were on to um, Bathurst. That was all run by the English. And uh, nothing exciting happened there except it was New Year's and, and uh, from, from there on up to Marrakesh, but we did cross the Sierra and we had to fly extra high. We had to fly 12,000, which we normally don't, <coughs> we don't fly, but the whole underside of the aircraft was all orange and uh, from the reflections of the sun on the, on the sand and in, uh, on the underside of the aircraft. We did make Marrakesh okay. Uh, Marrakesh, nothing exciting there except that to get ready to get on, then on into Iran. And that got to be quite, quite a task. Uh, it, uh, a lot's happened there. We, we were just followed. We were right behind the invasion of Iran when, uh, when we arrived and, and uh, we stayed in big, Big barracks, that, uh, eerie cold things that that uh, with a, one ceiling light, and, uh, but uh, it was better than where we went next. And they we went to uh, a place they called Tafarui, which sounds like mud, and it was. And we we had pub tents that we stayed in at uh, Tafarui, and uh, and we still flew, and uh, we thought we it was indignant that. Aviation types would be stuck in pup tents, but anyway, we got rained out, and they had to move us into in with the officers and, and on, on the concrete floors. But it was better than the straw bunks or the straw straw bags that we we had made up for sleeping in pup tents. Okay, we got. What was your mission? A mission? Yes. It was uh, it was to push across North Africa and uh, remove the Germans from North Africa. That was the push on Rommel, on the Rommel, on Rommel. That, and uh, just as we were there, that massacre happened in, or in North Africa where they got the best of our people. And, and uh, so one of our other groups, there were three groups of us, one of the groups came, had to come back and they started doing training again. Uh, and so we waited there for a month at least, and then we finally moved up to Phillipsville, which is just uh, this side of where, mm -hmm. where everything went bad in, in the, uh, that's where the Germans took, got, got us by the tail, and uh, we, uh, but it was all over with, and, and we started bombing, we started bombing, um, started a really big push on bombing, and, and uh, we, we first went up to Sardinia and we bombed it. That was our first mission. The second mission was on the was um, a shipping, a shipping in uh, the Tunisian Bay, and it looked like they were sitting waiting on us. I mean, everything blew loose. The 88s, 88s is, a, is quite a, quite a gun, but it was on the wrong side. It belonged to them, and uh, I, we felt we got caught, got caught in something, and I don't know what. What happened? But it sounded like somebody stood outside the plane, taking shovels full of sand and gravel, and throwing it at the side of the plane. 
which made it was that was the flat going off, and it was made in holes in the side. And you were flying over. Oh, we were Sardinia flying over time. Tunisia, over Tunis. Over Tunis. Over Tunis, right? And where were you based at the time? We you were based at uh, at Philville. What Philville? That's back behind. It. It's, uh, in that's North below, Africa. That's below Constantinople, uh, up in the mountains, right? Uh, but it's not Constantinople anymore. I think it's something else. Istanbul. Huh? Istanbul. Istanbul. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Nevertheless, I did get to go. I, I'll tell you how I got to go. But we caught. Uh, so we started down, and our wingmen, we had two wingmen, because we did have a, we had a spirit bomb site. We were a leader on this little, and one, there were 18 of us up from our group, and we lost 12 of them on this trip, and uh, we started down, and then we started, we were receiving all kind of troubles. Uh, we got pretty well shot up. We lost an engine, and uh, it knocked out, uh, our uh, our supply for the electrical supply, and so they we start the the uh, on the way down they we start the they start seeing ammunition I mean uh, um, bullets flying past us and hitting the other both engines, and the co-pilot uh, motioned to both the turret gunner and myself to get on back. So I went I went to go back to my position in the tail gun, but it wasn't there. It was shot away. Nothing there but a big hole. And uh, so I went back. On the way back, the tour gunner and myself both noticed that we we had a bomb hung up in the bomb bay, a 250-pounder. And so right away we 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 took we wired it down so that it wouldn't uh, even if we crash landed away, it wouldn't go off. And uh, then we went and took our positions and and. Uh, as we went down, we were, we were receiving shore battery uh, uh, shots, and our our right wing man he was taking them for us, and he got his nose all shot, the nose of his aircraft all shot away, and uh, he, he took a, a big beating, but he he covered us as we went down, and uh, finally he made a big circle and landed in a in a wheat field right near. Uh, near a barn, well, a Moroccan barn, and uh, the, the Bombay doors just kind of doubled up and swooped down and just brought all that dirt up into the plane, and we didn't know what was happening. It was, it was, it was weird, and, and uh, we were all in our positions for our crash land, and the, the, the uh, belly gunner, he takes a position behind the co-pilot he doubles in behind him, and then when you stop, you throw open the top doors above the pilot, co-pilot, and he goes out first. Well, he when he did, he put his foot in the middle of the co-pilot's back, and after the dust settled and everything, the co-pilot was the only one that got hurt. He got a sprain back from from the from the uh, waist gunner hitting him in the back, and he really wasn't hurt, but it, uh, it was just uh, something to talk about all night long. We what had, caused the airplane to go down? It was shot, it was shot up. It was the, the right engine, the right engine was, uh, was inoperative, and the left engine was, was leak, was uh, losing power. Was it shot by all the aircraft? It was ground shot by fire? 88s, 88s, and could have been by the FW-190 that was on our tail. That's an airplane. Yeah, that OFW-190 is a German, a German fighter, right? That the ME-109 and the 190s were in our area, and. Uh, well, Mr. Schaffer, I'm yes. going to ask you to go back and give us some details concerning your missions. How were you assigned to missions? What was your day like? On a day by day basis at the, uh, oh, okay, the forward right. sites. Well, yeah, right. in well they had an operation area where we're uh, on early in the morning, it should be somewhere between four or five o'clock. You go to the operation area, and they had, I think you see it right now, you see it on the, uh, on the History Channel where they have a big map of where they're going to go, and they keep it covered until you get everybody gets in there, and then you'll see the route that we're going to take. That's all up on this this big this big board. Then they they give you the briefing as to 
what you what we knew what we were carrying because we helped load it the night before. What's in our what, what kind of bombs we had in our aircraft, and of course our guns. I mean, we make sure that uh, we had enough uh, 50 calibers in our in our uh, our guns. Uh, I carried I, I had two uh, two 50s, but and they had long streams of uh, of supply uh, supplying a track to each gun, and uh, right. By the way, the B-26 has two bomb bays, which uh, the, the thing is that they had big cans where they could put a lot of ammunition, but they sacrificed the use of the, uh, they, not putting that much ammunition, only carrying about a third of what you're supposed to because of the weight, giving, giving it too, making it too tail heavy. So we, we quit taking a lot of 50 calibers there. Didn't need him anyway. I didn't shoot that much, but nevertheless, it. Uh, when I did, I was glad I had it. it uh, that and then the, we we loaded, we loaded the aircraft with all the all the uh, armament uh, the night before. So the next day, we saw where we were, where we were supposed to go and what we we're supposed to bomb. And uh, we had a. They gave us the takeoff time and where we where we uh, uh, gathered up. At about, uh, sort of off, made a circle, picked up everybody one by one, and then headed to the target. But, uh, Can you expand on that, please? Yeah. When you say they picked up everybody one by I'm one. I'm sorry. Yes, right. Well, the first the first planes go off, and they make they make a uh, <coughs> they make a large circle. And they make a more. A, a, I'm going to call it a 360. You start a 360 degree turn. And as they're doing that, the next the next planes are coming in and join and joining them, and the ones behind them. And by the time they come around, they, that's 360 again, which is about 20 minutes. And they come around again. They've picked up all all the other planes. All 18 have gathered in this formation. 18 planes. That'd be they're in in little uh, bits of threes. Uh, uh, a leader and, and two wingmen and. Uh, the way that works is that even when they drop, the leader has a spare bomb site, but the wingmen, wingmen don't. And two, the wingmen are enlisted men. So if they do, they'll open the bomb days, and when they, and uh, on the top of the B-26 are two lights, yeah, but they're flush, and you, they, you can, they can see it, the other bomb, bombardiers can see this. And when the, when the, the, the red light's showing, and when the green light goes on, that's when he drops his bombs. That's when the lead plane drops his bombs, and the wingmen drop their bombs. And so, uh, is that okay? We've got we got them all we got them all lined up, all in formation, and heading toward heading toward the target. But um, in this particular day, and there were eighteen airplanes 18, 18 in, in the in formation. Our yes, right. Okay, and. Uh, I don't know. I, we don't know what happened, but all of a sudden we're slowing down, and we're and uh, seem like we're we're uh, we're dead in the water. So, something happened. The the group or the planes in front of us. Let's see. We're stacked up about from eight thousand to ten thousand, and uh, they, they seem to stop. Right. I mean, we were not not in midair, but oh, well, we caught we caught we were holy hell from from that, and that's when. That's when we, we got our engine shot out and, and uh, everything went wrong. But we did happen to get to the target and we dropped our bombs. But I don't think they hit the target. Uh, to this day, I don't think they hit the target, but nevertheless. Uh, what was uh, the target? The, uh, the target was a shore, see, a, uh, where they unload boats and things. So that's when everybody split up. And had, they were on their own. So you were intercepted by German. Um, no, we were intercepted by fighters. Uh, you no, uh, 88s. Uh, the the uh, you know, uh, any aircraft. Oh, aircraft. Okay, aircraft, aircraft, right? Not right. any aircraft. You can look down, and when you see a little flash down below, you can see this black dot coming right up at you, and that's scary. 
believe me, right. So anyway, after we, well, we were picked up uh, after the uh, big dust storm and everything else when we landed. We were picked up by uh, an ambulance came to us. We thought, oh boy, I don't know who, who this belonged to. It belonged, it was from the, uh, uh, the Australians. They were there. And, uh, they thought, well, we were, they were going to pick up the bodies, but we, we were all in good shape, we're, except the co-pilot was pretty bad. <laughs> and that's kind of one of the, one of the jokes of the, of, the, of the day. We needed, we needed a good joke, but nevertheless, uh, uh, they picked us up and we went on, we, oh, we took the bus, ferry bomb site with us. And uh, that, every night where we stayed on the way back, that would be locked up. And, in the safe, but nevertheless, that I'm getting a little bit ahead of it. But that night, we stayed in the tent with uh, some of their, some of the uh, Aussie uh, wounded, and uh, had an endless, an endless uh, chain of smoking. We smoked everything we could get our hands on, but we we were a big case of nerves, having gone down through through all that. Uh, So was this an American base that they took you to, or an Australian yeah, Australia. base? Australian. You're right. In North and, Africa. And it was, and it was, it was supper time, and they, one thing they asked us, did we, did we have our irons? And that one didn't strike us as funny, but that's what they call their knife, fork, and spoon. So we don't carry our knife, fork, and spoon. <laughs> they dug up a, a utensil for each one of us, and uh, we ate, uh, I guess. I don't recall what it was or anything of this sort, but we did bed down and we watched other planes come by. We're come back from bombing over the same where, place where we'd been, and we saw a couple of them shot down, and, and some of the people bail all of them, and, and all kind of gory things happened that night. One one fellow bailed out, and the parachute didn't open. It just was just a loose rag coming down. And that was a good distance from us, and. Uh, so that night we did all we did was talk and talk, but all night long we could hear the uh, artillery going on. Just uh, oh, I mean, well, I'd say about a mile from us. I we mean, and uh, so finally we got out of there and started heading back. But uh, we had to go clean across North Africa. From there we went to Seuss. Uh, can I stop you for a minute? How did you head back? By what mode of transportation? Any, time, any kind of transportation we could get. And we did. We had all kind of transportation. We got left out of there in a truck. Then oh, we you were not flying, okay. Yeah, we weren't flying, no. And finally, at one place, we did get uh, a C-47, but this was three days later. We got a, three, a C-47 to take us back to our, our outfit. And, uh, but they, uh, they knew that we hadn't been killed or anything of that sort because the one, the plane that went down with us, uh, they went on, they got back and uh, they, uh, they didn't give our clothes away or anything. Uh, that, they, uh, a real, real good friend of mine was in that plane and uh, so that uh, he, he's still alive, he lives right down in, in uh, Madonna, Donna, Madonna, and uh, he is. Uh, so when you got back, yeah, what happened? Well, we within a few days we attempted another another uh, mission, but uh, the pilot, he, I'm going to use this expression, he turned white knuckle. And I think the whole thing kind of shook up his nervous nervous system. And uh, he began to to make up different deficiencies with the plane, and we did two missions, or started two missions, and we aborted him. We turned back because he saw something wrong, and uh, from then on he never flew again. So we stayed. We waited around until we made up a made up a new crew. The co-pilot took over as the pilot, picked up a co-pilot, and we flew around training together for, a, oh, it seemed, seemed like about a month, but I, I hear tell that it was only about, about a week or two. Now, it was two weeks at least. 
and uh, before we start flying again. And, and uh, that pilot's still alive and uh, lives in Plant City, Florida. But uh, then we started, started this thing seriously and we started some real, very interesting missions and coming out of uh, North Africa. And then we moved up, we moved up to the Tunis area. That's where this picture that uh, we have was taken in Tunis. And uh, of, uh, we, we kind of attached ourselves to, a, to one plane which have a big, had a big picture of Pistol Pack and Mama on the side of it. It was, uh, you know, they, they use a lot of the Varga, the Varga girls to, to illustrate uh, uh, whoever they're going to illustrate. But our, our, um, our squadron insignia was on the op was on one side, and the girls were always on the right side, and and uh, they had some good good painters there in the outfit. The um, when you say you attach yourself to this airplane, oh yeah, what does that mean? That means well that we try whenever we went on missions we tried to get that aircraft, but it flew it flew a lot more than we we flew it. But we were a so long you time. didn't fly the same airplane all the time. No, 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 no. no. The plane. But you were with the same crew all the time. So. After that, same crew, yeah. right? We we're, we're all together, right? The uh, oh, that time that we were out it, it was delayed. I, uh, that's when I made a trip up to Istanbul and around different places we get to visit. And I mm -hmm. uh, found out there was a friend of mine, a, a nervous friend, was up in the area and so you, you, you get around and, and uh, you, you see the see the land, the land and what have you but uh, from Tunis we made we start making trips to to uh, Sicily we were in, in on the uh, Sicily invasion but that was the one thing that we did that they never mentioned there was an island over there which boy was loaded with uh, with guns any aircraft guns but it wasn't Malta. He never flew around Malta. Malta was over to the other side of us. And we always steered away from Malta because those boys were sharp with any aircraft. And it was the English that held Malta. And they didn't, but they didn't want anybody coming near Malta. So the other was Pantaria. And it was loaded with any aircraft gun. But nevertheless, we started working on, on that, on, on uh, Pantaria, working on it, meaning uh, one and two missions a day to bomb the the gun emplacements on this island, and a little bit. Were they German or Italian? It was German. It was German. Yeah, it was German. Okay. Uh, German. And finally, uh, they dropped people, uh, pamphlets on it, saying, "Okay, if you, you give up, just put a big white cross on the runway, you know." And uh, it was another oh, three, four days before the White Cross appeared. But in the meantime, we were still dropping bombs on each gun emplacement. They were, they were well, well built. And finally, we took uh, Panteria without stepping foot on it. And from there on was uh, the invasion of uh, Sicily. And uh, we were in support, in support of the, uh, the army. And everything went pretty good there. Uh, on up to we also did uh, side uh, side bombing missions to to uh, Salerno, uh, across to Rome. We, we bombed Rome on Easter, but not Rome itself, from the airfield at Rome. And also we uh, we bombed University of Rome, and and that's when we had the worst we ever we ever had. We, when we went to the briefing that morning. To Naples, where there were some, there were some uh, uh, fuel tanks or oil, uh, fuel tanks there, a big fuel f uh, farm of uh, gasoline farm, and uh, they were after that because there's, that's where they're supplying the Germans with the fuel. And we got there, and they were briefing us on the flak, or the any aircraft, and they said, "Well, the best we can figure, it's worse this way." and bad that way. And so right down the middle of it is your best bet. And that's the worst mission it was on. That's when thing, everything went loose. And we're 
air, pieces of aircraft were falling all around us. I saw an en engine over here going down. Just the engine and the propeller looked like it looked like a helicopter, and, and just pieces of, of of B-26s all around us. And but we didn't catch a thing, and, uh, and we broke there and broke out into the uh, to the Bay of uh, of Naples, and there there stood there stood the big German. <laughs> A German battleship sit down there, and he started to shoot at us. I, I said, "Man, that, we don't want any more of that." I, said, well, I was talking to him. You get to the point where you talk to yourself. There's nobody back in the back to talk to anyway. So, and uh, we broke out. We broke out of there, and I got I got on uh, on the way back. Then we started letting down toward uh, toward North Africa, our base, and I sent him back a radio message that. What, what we'd seen on the big ship, and, and they acknowledged that. And, but uh, that's the only time I've ever used, I had to use a radio or, or sent back a, a, mes a message of any, of any uh, significance. Uh, All told, how many missions, combat missions, did you fly? 46. Of the 46, before we ever went into combat uh, uh, outside of our area, we had, I had six, six missions out looking for subs. We were carrying uh, 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 death charges in our bomb bay, and uh, I never did see it. I don't know that mm -hmm. the front end of my airplane. I don't know if other guys. We never did know. We never, we never dropped any, but we did. <coughs> pardon me. We got credit for the missions, so the total was forty-six. Over what period of time? Over. Uh, I come back. And, let's see. Oh, I, yeah, it was uh, 14 months. So you were there in, uh, for 14 months? Yeah, 14 months, right. And every day you were not flying. What did you do during the days you were not flying? Roamed around. <laughs> we just roamed around, like I said, we went. Um, and, we ne and we negotiated with the, with the natives. We, we treated uh, some uh, <laughs> winter underwear for eggs. And uh, things of that sort, or uh, what they what they wanted was a uh, a mattress cover. Those are those are choice things. And uh, and uh, one time we uh, we came about a ham, but a lot of the other fellows in the squadron got hams, and so they put on a big search for all the hams, all the hams that were stolen. And uh, what we'd done, we'd taken and wrapped up our ham real good and buried it. Well, we had a pet dog <laughs> come along. And when they started inspecting, the dog started digging up the ham. So right away we, we, we called the dog. He, he called the dog off. And it, uh, but that was some of the things that happened. We did, uh, we did get out and, and look around. And, uh, so after your, you completed yes. the 46 missions? Yes. Did you return to the uh, United States? Yeah, I, well, that, uh, we moved up to Sardinia. and. Uh, that's where I came back from, and uh, I got sick up there. And uh, it's, I don't know, the food, the food was too short, sh was too soft, and I mean, I, nothing went right. And, or the wine was <laughs> too green. I don't know, what, but I got I got yellow jaundice real bad, and I wasn't about to turn myself in because a lot of the fellows had jaundice, and they just put them in the hospital and feed them a lot of sugar and candy, you know, candy and stuff like that. So, I. Uh, I came back. We flew out of there to uh, back to Casablanca. I oh, know we went to or, to Algiers and then Algiers to Casablanca, and we caught a boat from there. That's and I didn't turn myself in as sick until I hit the boat. And boy, they have wonderful food on that boat. But I sure didn't want any of it anyway. First time I saw some really, real good food. What was your first base after returning to the United States? Uh, I was. I was a month in the hospital. Where? At St. Louis. In St. Louis. In St. Louis. Yeah, right in the Jefferson Barracks Hospital. And there's where I, I took. Uh, they took. They went through my veins. Each day I had a. I had a full a liter of, uh, of glucose and distilled water. I went one side this side and then that side. It just flushed out my whole uh, blood system. And when you recovered. And what then from there, did I, you were yeah, to? I, I applied. I thought, well, and the war was still on. And I thought, well, my gosh, I'm not going to go back. 
I'm gonna I want to sit up front. So I actually I applied for pilot training, and uh, so when I left there, I went I left there and went to uh, for R and R to uh, uh, Miami, Florida, and uh, we all stayed at stayed at some real nice uh, hotels and and uh, went through the, uh, the the questioning and everything about getting into the uh, cadet program. Uh, and so uh, what it, it come to come to pass that I, I made it, but there was, there was a big a long line of of, uh, of individuals wanting to go, and so they shipped shipped us all out to different places and became what they call on the line trainees. And uh, that was a peculiar looking group, but they were in in part they were a lot of them returnees, a lot of fellows that had been been uh, shot up a little bit and. And uh, we went through a lot of military, the custom things, a lot of marching and uh, what have you. And uh, there, that's when I went. I was stationed at uh, Greenwood, Mississippi. Uh, I ran across a very interesting young lady, and uh, and which uh, after a time, why when I left there, where we still. She was a telephone operator in a nearby, nearby town. But oh, what, what, how I met her? Yeah, this is interesting because the group of us went up to uh, Memphis and uh, uh, stayed in a hotel. Uh, we were about six of us in one, one hotel room, and we got we got ripped off that night. And the only guy that had any money in his, had it in his breast pocket. The rest of us lost everything. And, so we came on back on the bus, and the bus stops halfway between between Memphis and uh, Clark and at Clarksdale, Memphis and and Greenwood, and uh, a couple of a couple of three young ladies got on, and uh, one uh, I had a cold, by the way, and I, I wasn't much on on, uh, on building up any relationship. And but does so, this young lady eventually become your wife? Absolutely, I think right. That's what you're leading up to. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And she eventually became my wife, and and uh, we saw a lot of each other then. And and she, uh, we made arrangements to uh, after I got in the uh, the the flying in the, in the uh, let's see, I left I left there and went to, went from there to San Antonio. It was uh, that was more military and. And uh, we, uh, we, all the all the cadet officers had swords. I had myself a sword and uh, a saber. And we uh, it was a peculiar looking bunch. It was one one squadron there, and they all had wings and medals. But that's all they had. They had the the, the cadet the cadet is sitting on their arm and the cadet sitting there but they they all had medals and it they were eye eyeovers to all the all around but nevertheless we we uh, did leave there and we had that we had arrangements then for uh, for my wife and I to get married in the next station which would be Tulare California we're approaching the end of uh, our cassette so can you sum up and tell us what was the most significant part that you remember all of your service? Oh, it's so much of it, right. And uh, I, oh. Other oh, than I, we I know the what, combat what was, part what, was. I know the most, really, and I'll, and I'll do credit, the most significant part and for the longevity of the thing and the, the, the pleasantry of it was the fact that I got a real good Young lady as a wife, she she loved to travel, and uh, everything it, it, it was beautiful, and it, sometimes it um, I look back and I've only been married what fifty eight years, so that's there to stay. And that that is the most significant thing that that is so outstanding, a wonderful lady. If you were to talk to Young people today, what will you tell them about your experience in the service? 
Well, I have to isolate it to little incidents. That's about it. Of some of them, which we told here about being shot down, and and some of the uh, some of the things that uh, that that happened. Mainly, I think they're more interested in the combat aspect of it. I emphasize that. Would you uh, encourage them to go into the service? Oh, absolutely. It's a, wonder, it's a wonderful thing. Why? It's good for them. It's good for you. It, uh, it helps you along. It, it kind of dictates what you're going to wear for the day. You don't have to worry about that part of it. <laughs> but uh, it, it lays a good plan for, for your existence. For uh, I don't know that the discipline, the discipline is as, uh, as prevalent today as it was then, but, but uh, we found it very good, very good for you. For us. Other than your wife, what else do you have to show for your period in the service that you're proud of? Three wonderful boys. It's right for a fact. <laughs> I really just have to be the fourth one. <laughs> and would you encourage them to uh, make a career in the service? Or well, the, what, the, the, uh, what we did over there, there we uh, kind of let them run their own way. And they. Uh, Oh, they ran good, clean, and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, highly praised by us, by, the, by the mother and father. Well, very good. Thank you very much. My pleasure. For sharing your experience with us. Is there anything else that you would like to add? I have. Would you like to add? Is there anything oh, add, else you, you would add, like right. to say to the American people? No, it just uh, oh to keep yourself in good mind. Don't lose the faith. Praise the Lord. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. We certainly appreciate you sharing your experience with us. My pleasure. I got a question. When you were saying